So Windows 11 has been out for over a month now. How many people have actually upgraded in the first roughly 25, 26 days to this new absolutely flawless, zero bugs, zero problems, you know, no reason not to upgrade operating system, Windows 11? Well, 1.82% of people, according to the Steam hardware survey, upgraded to Windows 11 in the first like 25 days of it being available. Now this was a free upgrade if you're on Windows 10. It's a free update, man, and you can keep all your files. The one thing that will not be kept when you do upgrade to Windows 11 from Windows 10 is every single one of the files and applications and folders even that you had pinned on your start menu in Windows 10 will now be gone and you'll have to redo everything in this new OS, on the start menu at least. They got rid of a lot of features in this new start menu on Windows 11 and uh, some of them, some of them are good. They got rid of the whole live tiles. They've now kind of been moved to a different section in Windows, which is actually the widgets section. I haven't even got it enabled, but you can enable it here by going on the taskbar settings and enabling widgets. Now, I'm not gonna ever use this. I will disable this right away. It basically gives you like sports news, stocks, weather, and like just, a bunch of news articles, all right? A couple other things about the widgets thing. You can't even add third-party widgets. For now, I will disable it. It's, it's kind of useless and, uh, you know, if you do disable it, you're gonna have a bit more space and real estate on your actual taskbar. Getting back to the start menu, it's a bit of a downgrade, in my opinion. You can't actually get rid of this entire recommended section and have more space for your pinned applications. Instead, you have a, a grid of like three by six. So a total of 18 applications in this little one section here for your applications that you can pin. And if you wanna have any more, you're gonna have to scroll down and see all the other ones. Personally, really not a fan of this. You can't even resize this new start menu. Like you literally cannot resize it. Usually when you do install Windows 11, it will be in the center. But if you do want to, as you can see, you can shift everything back over to the left as it should be. All right. I tried using it in the middle. I prefer it on the left. All right. I'm used to Windows 10 and Windows 7 and all, all the other windows is before that. Another change is that you can no longer put folders or group a bunch of like applications in like one one thing and then you press it and then like a folder opens up nah you just i don't know I, I really don't know why they like got rid of so many things when they released this new star menu it really doesn't make sense to me getting back to the steam hardware survey though why did less than two percent of people upgrade to windows 11 well there was <laughs> there was good reason to stay far away from windows 11 upon its initial release especially if you have an amd cpu like I do. Now, I'm not even sure if just games were affected by this performance issue on the AMD CPUs. If you were to upgrade from Windows 10 to 11, you could see. All right, now, at the time of recording this video, this is a fixed problem. It no longer affects AMD CPUs, at least as far as I understand. People saw as much as 50% less FPS in games after they upgraded to Windows 11, which is just outrageous, mate. In some cases, it was actually worse than 50%. That's, that's bad. I, I really don't know how Microsoft overlooked this and forgot about AMD Ryzen CPUs. Ryzen took a good chunk of the market share over the last couple of years, and Microsoft just forgot about them and forgot to optimize the OS that they officially released. And for like 20 days, People on AMD were suffering bad. Personally though, I didn't experience as big of a performance drop as some people experienced. I don't know if that's because of my specific CPU or what, but this issue has since been fixed. If you go over to the AMD chipset driver website, I will leave all of these links in the video description down below to like the chipset update, as well as all the other articles I'm gonna talk about in today's video, because there are some ways to actually improve Windows 11 that I'm gonna show you if you do go ahead and upgrade, some things in Windows 11 I really just don't like and there's ways to fix them, all right? But if you're on AMD, there's a free AMD chipset driver update, which I myself have installed just to be on the safe side. And you can get a further around 6% of an improvement in performance across, I think, just about every application if you disable a feature called core isolation. Now, this is something my CPU, I guess, doesn't actually support. But what core isolation is, it's gonna run, I think every single application on Windows 11 inside of its own virtual machine. But as a result, 
you lose about 6% in performance. This is a feature you can absolutely disable. It's really easy. You legit just type in core isolation and um, it sh something should pop up here. For some reason, for me, it's not popping up. So I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's, not, it's not enabled for, for, for my system, but it might be for yours. And it's something you absolutely should double check. If performance is your number one priority, and you want to get the absolute most amount of FPS and just, you know, workflow, speed up everything. Yeah, disable that feature if you want to get a bit more frames. Now, Windows 11 has actually removed a bunch of features. When you first go ahead and do like a clean install of Windows 11 now, you're not going to be greeted by Cortana any longer. All right, she's kind of gone. If you type in Cortana in Windows 11, um, there's an app here. All right, the Cortana app very much still exists but you have to sign into Cortana in order to make it work. Now, you can go over to app settings for Cortana and nothing will pop up until I think you sign in. I ain't signing in. Oh, hell no. They removed 3D Viewer, OneNote, Paint 3D, Internet Explorer, believe it or not, uh, that's now been replaced with Edge, as well as Skype. Those will no longer come pre-installed with Windows 11. One thing that might actually blow your mind right now, all right? I have no clue why Microsoft thought this was a good idea. When you try and drag an application to your taskbar to pin it, you can't. Why? Uh, the way to pin an application is you have to right click on it and you gotta press pin to taskbar. For some reason, with the widgets panel and the chat panel, it makes sense for the task view and the search, but the chat, you legit have to go into taskbar settings like one extra step, like why? To disable this thing. Same for the widgets. Like if the widgets thing is enabled and you right click on it, it just does an animation and nothing happens. One thing in Windows 11 that I just, I couldn't get used to is the new context menu. When you would right click on something or press this button on your keyboard, you get the typical context menu pop up where you know you can make a new folder quickly and you can do all these other things. As you can see with the Windows 11 update, they made it so much more difficult and I really don't know why. What's wrong with the old context menu? They just try to go like above and beyond and like make it like I guess more fresh feeling, more unique feeling like oh look at this new Windows 11 with like cut icons and copy paste icons. I personally much prefer this context menu rather than the new Windows 11 one. Now you still had access to all of this menu as long as you pressed on show more options, which is like an extra step. When I was just using Windows, I wanted to use the show more options thing almost every single time. When you would right click on like a .zip file, WinRAR, at least my WinRAR, it, it wouldn't like pop up with extract files or extract here, or if you'd want to archive a folder, when you would right click on it, this menu would pop up and you'd have to press on show more options to get access to add to archive via WinRAR is just an extra step that you don't have to deal with. There is actually a way to bring it back. As you can see, I've brought mine back. When you right click on anything, you can easily quickly make a new folder, make a new shortcut, make a .zip file, zip something, extract something. Things are easy and quick and you don't have to deal with like weird icons for copy paste. If you'd want to quickly access your video control panel, you, you'd have to press on show more options then the video control panel instead of just your right click you press the video control panel and you move on with your life you can bring back the full context menu i'm gonna leave this article in the description down below this guide shows you everything it honestly takes like two minutes and spending the time to do this will definitely save you a bunch of time but yeah the whole taskbar settings and the missing context menu here genuinely triggered me and uh, i've since pinned task manager as an application i can quickly access whenever I want. You can quickly access Task Manager anytime by pressing the Windows X combination shortcut and this menu pops up. Alternatively, instead of right clicking on the taskbar now, you just right click on the Windows key and you have access to all of this. Uh, when you go to sound settings after right clicking over on the sound icon, you can quickly access all of your sound settings and we actually wanted to go onto volume mixer because you can quickly access volume mixer through this as well. Volume mixer, actually has been improved. One thing I found that's quite weird is the power plant settings. Uh, when you, for example, I'm on AMD, so I've got some custom like AMD power plants. I don't know how this would be like on Intel, I'll, I'll be honest. But when you select AMD Ryzen Balanced or Balanced, you have this power mode section over in system, then you go to power. And surely you'd think, 
power and the power plan options would be the, the same thing. Like what you'd be able to adjust here should be the typical power plan settings, right? No, I don't know why there's like two now and it, can't, it works a bit weird. So when you would select high performance, for example, instead of it going from balanced to best performance, as you might expect, you switch to high performance and it says power mode can't be, can't be set while high performance power plan is used. And then you're like, all right, what about ultimate performance? Nope, still the same thing. What about power saver? Nope, can't do it. What about AMD high performance? Nope, can't do it. The only thing it can do is balanced or AMD Ryzen balanced. Then you have access to this other special power mode and you can switch between best power efficiency balanced or best performance. This definitely looks like you're adjusting the power options, but not all the power options are available in this new power setting. Overall though, I am still very much a fan of the new Windows 11 like settings menu. It's really easy to access. We have easy access to Windows updates. Just about any setting can be quickly and easily browsed through and, and like the genres of settings like Bluetooth, network, like personalization, everything's on the left now. So much easier to navigate. Almost all of this has been like redone, remade from scratch. It's genuinely a big, big improvement. They've redone, of course, this entire section. Uh, you have quick and easy access to Spotify or whatever other music player uh, that is on your PC. You have easy access to like your Wi-Fi networks. Uh, you can, of course, turn on Bluetooth, turn on Nightlight, just like this. A couple weird little quirks though. When you right click on Nightlight and go to settings, surely you'd think it's gonna take you straight to the Nightlight setting. Instead, it doesn't. It just highlights this for some reason, even when the Nightlight is on and you press on this, you right click on Nightlight because you wanna adjust the strength of the Nightlight. It doesn't take you there. You have to, once again, do an extra step and then you can adjust the strength of the Nightlight. When you go on Bluetooth, however, it does take you straight to Bluetooth. Of course, there's also this entire section when you press on the calendar, you get your notification area, which you can easily clear just like that, super easy, and you have a calendar. Wow. Um, one thing that's actually really cool, you might have noticed if you looked at the bottom right of my taskbar, I have a weather forecast right in the corner here at all times. This is called Weather Bar. I will leave a link in the description down below where you can download this. But this app, you can, oh, I, <laughs> I think I've just turned it off somehow by pressing on that. Let me, let me press on it again. Nope, I haven't broken it midway through the video. <laughs> Come on, I need to, uh, I wanted to demonstrate this, this cool Weather Bar app. <laughs> I broke it guys, I broke it. But it's basically like one of the tray icons I don't know why it broke. It is apparently not compatible with Windows 11 from what I've heard, but it still works as long as you don't do what I just did. When it's on, because it, it, it can be like a startup application, don't try to turn on a second one. Um, apart from that, you of course have your normal tray icons here. Uh, I actually have set up a few custom ones via MSI Afterburner to quickly glance at my CPU temperature as well as my GPU temperature at any time. Of course, if you do have the NZXT uh, liquid cooler, the Z73 Kraken, you, you can also look at your CPU temps on your actual CPU, like via the screen. Pretty cool, but it's also kind of nice to have them in the tray. And you can set that up very easily via MSI Afterburner. One thing that is actually kind of cool about Windows 11 is the whole Snap Assist. It's so much better. It's so much more improved. And this like maximize or like minimize icon in the middle here, when you just mouse over it, for like a second, you have access to this entire like menu, which is super cool. You can like easily sort um, various applications just like this, man, boom. And then if you mouse over it again, the same thing pops up and you can like set things up in such an easy way. And the whole Snap Assist tool works so incredibly well. And what I really like in particular is that it's so much easier to quickly snap things to the side, all right? And like, boom, like, such an improved snap assist. Really, really big fan of that. Apart from that though, my overall experience on Windows 11 has been all right. After doing a couple of changes, like getting the full context menu back, I was much happier using the OS going forward. The overall performance issues, I haven't experienced them whatsoever really. The, the whole core isolation feature is for some reason broken for me and doesn't even work. TPM 2.0 is of course one thing to keep in mind though. A lot of PCs, might not actually meet that requirement to even install Windows 11 in the first place. But don't you worry, you don't actually need the Trusted Platform Module 2.0 
technically, all right? You, you can get around it. I want to leave a video in the description down below that shows you how to bypass that requirement and how you can do an absolutely normal clean install of Windows 11 without the TPM 2.0 requirement. You can completely bypass it. That's how I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 11 very soon because I have not gotten the Android apps to work, all right? Apparently, I think this only works in the US, if I'm not mistaken. When you're on the Windows Insider, like the beta program or the dev program, I don't know about the dev program, but I know for a fact the beta Windows Insider program gives you access to like a Microsoft Store preview that supports the Android apps. Now those Android apps will work through the Amazon App Store, which is a bit weird. Like I've tried to search for this Amazon App Store, but I'm in the UK and unfortunately I don't think Android apps are supported in the UK, at least the whole like Amazon App Store beta program. Uh, it's not quite available, doesn't quite work for people in the UK, at least from what I've tried. Like I'm on the Windows Insider build, I really did try to get the, the whole Android apps the thing to work natively through the Microsoft Store. I just couldn't get it to work. That is legit the main reason I've stayed on the Windows Insider build for this long is so I could test the whole Android thing early, but it's, it's not letting me. So I'm gonna do like a full clean install of Windows 11 without the TPM 2.0 requirement because I did just upgrade from Windows 10 to 11 and I stuck to the Windows Insider program. Unfortunately, my camera turned off as I was about to record the outro, but, oh, Hello, there's Windows, uh oh, oh damn. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> I'm just trying to film the outro here, saying like, hey, I'm gonna be sticking to Windows 11 going forward. What just happened? Ooh, oh look, win it's Windows 11, guys. <laughs> what? Um, not sure, not sure what happened there. But yeah, I'm gonna enter this video here, guys. My PC nearly turned off just now. I thought it was about to blue screen or something, but I think we're good, I think we're good. Damn. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna be sticking to Windows 11 going forward, although uh, I think a good idea would be to get off of the Insider build and get onto like a stable version of Windows 11 because uh, you, you might have random things like, like that happen to you. That's actually a first. It's never done that before until I, until I began recording this outro. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. All the links to everything in the setup, of course, as well as all of the articles I featured in today's video will be in the description down below if you want to go check them out. Luckily, the whole performance issue seems to be fixed on AMD and you can improve the performance even more by disabling the whole like uh, virtualization thing. Core isolation, I think it's called. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye.